Okay, so today we have Emily Nardoni, who will tell us about duality of Archer and SQCD from Arturus Douglas theories. Take it away. Uh, okay, thank you very much for the invitation to talk at this uh, at this nice meeting. Um, so uh, yes, today I'm going to tell you about some work uh, I did from from this year uh, with my uh, uh, really great collaborators Kazunobu Mariyoshi and Jay Wan Song. Um, and uh, that, that's about some duality between uh, some, uh, some n equals to one uh, Lagrangian gauge theory and uh, one of these, uh, uh, a set of theories that are related to these strongly coupled uh, Argyris Douglas theories in four dimensions. Okay, and feel free to interrupt, I guess, with questions. Um, but I'd like to begin with just some like very general motivations uh, that I have, like thinking about this sort of subject. Uh, more generally. So, uh, of course, uh, as I think uh, probably all of us in this audience appreciate, string theory is a really powerful framework to uh, generate many interesting examples of strongly coupled quantum field theories and, and, and to uh, develop tools to really like get a handle on their, uh, on their properties. Uh, and so, uh, in particular, uh, we know um, that there are many, many uh, non-trivial strongly coupled uh, quantum field theories, and I'm, I'm talking in this talk only about super <laughs> symmetric quantum field theories, and really only about super conformal <laughs> uh, quantum field theories um, that arise as the low energy limit of uh, brain configurations in string theory. And so uh, I like to think about this as some sort of uh, like machine where uh, uh, as input to my uh, quote unquote uh, geometric engineering uh, or string theory reduction machine, uh, I have some configuration of brains. I have some like compact, like D-dimensional manifold uh, on which I'm going to wrap the brains. And I have some details of a like topological twist or, or some means so that I can preserve some amount of supersymmetry on this curved space. And then um, uh, my output is uh, a quantum field theory, which is uh, in, in lower dimensions and uh, characterized uh, by all of, this, uh, all of this input data, and in particular, uh, especially by the topology of this uh, internal space. So uh, uh, in this way, uh, sort of the tagline is that this sort of geometric engineering or string theory reductions, these allow us to generate and geometrically organize large classes of quantum field theories, and in particular, strongly coupled quantum field theories, because a generic sort of, we've seen quantum field theory that we get with this sort of procedure tends to be a, a very strongly coupled. So uh, I like to view this as uh, this sort of uh, procedure uh, as a really rich testing ground for just exploring aspects of quantum field theories in, in general. Like we, you know, we start out in like the beginning of our studies thinking about weakly coupled like Lagrangian gauge theories. But then we learn very quickly that the space of quantum field theory is much more rich and interesting uh, and, uh, uh, and kind of wild than we imagined. Uh, and in particular, we have these sort of uh, quote unquote non Lagrangian um, quantum field theories that are sort of generic in this geometric uh, uh, engineering type of uh, procedure, uh, which don't have a weekly, uh, which we're calling, you know, quote unquote non Lagrangian because they don't have uh, any tunable parameters that let us go to some weakly coupled limit uh, uh, anywhere in, in their parameter space. Um, and of course, we have like many other types of like interesting quantum field theories uh, in this space, and, and we want to explore this space uh, more generally and understand like what, what its boundaries are, uh, and also understand what its interconnections are. So, of course, one of the big takeaways of research in quantum field theory and string theory from the last, I don't know, like three decades, uh, is that this space is really richly connected in often surprising ways. And so by like studying one corner of this space, like these weakly coupled Lagrangian gauge theory, we might actually be able to learn really non-trivial things about uh, other corners uh, of this space where we have less um, 
uh, obvious tools at our disposal. And so by these sort of uh, arrows I'm <laughs> abstractly putting on this diagram, I mean, uh, these could be like renormalization group flows. They could be different types of dualities. So like IR types of dualities or like universalities where two, uh, where two different descriptions flow to the same fixed point at low energies. They could be like a decoupling limit uh, in string theory, which I can you know, really think of as a kind of uh, cross-dimensional uh, duality. Uh, it, this could be like a holographic duality, like, like ADS CFT between a CFT and a theory of gravity uh, and, and so on. And so uh, our goal, uh, uh, or at least my, my, my goal in this program uh, is to really harness these, all of these interconnections uh, uh, between uh, different parts of this space of quantum field theory uh, to develop tools for computing quantum field theory observables, especially at strong coupling. Uh, and so I have in mind data like, uh, you know, uh, Tift anomalies, uh, the generalized symmetry data of the quantum field theories, uh, quantum numbers of BPS operators, uh, indices and uh, partition functions, uh, information about the moduli spaces of these theories, uh, conformal and flavor central charges, and 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 so on. And uh, uh, amongst these kinds of like powerful interconnections that that we might utilize, uh, uh, the the one in this talk that I'm going to be focused on is. Uh, uh, I would call it like an IR type of duality or a universality. And so for the rest of this talk, when I say the word duality, I just, I just want to be really specific. What I mean <laughs> is this kind of IR duality where at high energies, I have two quantum field theories or two descriptions that look uh, very different from each other. Uh, but um, at low energies, they flow to the same a uh, super conformal fixed point. Um, we're only talking about SCFT uh, in this talk. And, uh, and so in particular, their long distance physics is exactly the same. So it has the same universal uh, features. And so you can mean different things when you say the word duality. And, and for the rest of this talk, th this is what, what I mean uh, when I say the word du duality. Okay, so th those are like my general uh, motivations. And going, going forward, my, my plan for this, uh, the, the rest of this talk is to tell you about a particular example of such a IR type duality uh, that we, uh, like I found with my collaborators um, this last year between, on the one hand, um, a, a Lagrangian gauge theory. So a 40 N equals to one gauge theory, which is like a cousin of uh, SQCD. And on the other hand, uh, uh, a cousin of one of these, like quote unquote non Lagrangian strongly coupled um, uh, uh, super conformal field theories called, uh, these are Jairus Douglas theories, uh, and some uh, uh, n equals, so, so these are n equals to two theories in general, and so some n equals to one deformation of these, um, uh, of these strongly coupled theories. And so we're going to argue that um, these two very different looking descriptions actually flow to the same. Uh, in some range of parameters, fixed point at low energies. And so next I'm, I'm going to um, tell you about um, the left-hand side uh, of this duality. I'll tell you a little story about what we know about this class of uh, 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 cousins of SQCD, adjoint SQCD in, in four dimensions. And then uh, I'm going to tell you about the right-hand side of this story and um, some uh, work that uh, I and others have been doing, thinking about um, uh, deformations of these uh, Arduous Douglas theories uh, that we're going to claim are, are dual to some, some theories in this other class. And then I'll, I'll discuss some checks of this duality. So are there any, maybe, uh, are there any questions before I, I go forward? Okay, great. Okay, so adjoint SQCD. So the quintessential example of one of these IR types of dualities in um, supersymmetric quantum field theory uh, is, of course, cyber duality in 40n equals to 1 SQCD. So uh, let, let me remind you um, uh, of, of, of this kind of 
um, building block duality for, for many other types of, of dualities bet between theories of this type. So this is a duality between, on the one hand, 40n equals to 1 SQCD, by which I mean the uh, four-dimensional uh, SUN gauge theory with uh, some number uh, NF of fundamental and anti-fundamental chiral superfields, like the quark uh, and anti-quark superfields. And uh, uh, on and and the rank of the gauge group is n or a number of colors. Uh, and on the other side, uh, a, a different gauge theory, so an SU NF minus n gauge theory, with uh, also some matter, so some the same number NF of uh, uh, fundamental and anti-fundamental chiral superfields, but now in in the fundamental representation of this other gauge group. Um, plus some, um, there's some singlet matter, uh, 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 some singlet chiral superfields, uh, plus there's uh, a superpotential that couples the, the singlet chiral superfields to the, um, uh, to these dual uh, quark superfields. And so the claim is that within a conformal window of parameters, so uh, when the number of, of flavors is uh, is in this window between three halves of n and, and three n uh, on on the upper side, uh, that these two gauge theories flow to the same uh, fixed point, uh, and this fixed point is a, a, a forty n equals to one superconformal field theory. Um, and so one of the reasons that this uh, that cyborg duality is so so useful and great is that it, of course, strength, uh, exchanges uh, weak and strong coupling. So when the left-hand side theory is, is strongly coupled, the right-hand side theory is more weakly coupled and vice versa. The couplings are related by some inverse relation, uh, by some like inverse. Uh, so that makes it very useful. And uh, there, there are many checks of this duality. This is like very firmly established, uh, of course, the global symmetries match uh, on, on either side of the duality. Uh, all of the Tuft anomalies match. Uh, all of the gauge invariant chiral operators match exactly. Um, you can check that the uh, uh, that going out on the moduli space, everything matches. That by deforming the two theories, uh, like I, I get consistent pictures by deforming on either side of the duality. Um, the superconformal index matches exactly on either side of the duality. That's an extremely strong check um, that that these two theories are are really equivalent uh, in the IR uh, and uh, and so on. Okay, so uh, something kind of interesting happens when I think about adding like various types of matter to to this kind of uh, uh, basic example of cyborg duality. And so in particular, uh, I'm going to add matter. Uh, so chiral superfields that are in the adjoint representation of our gauge group. So I, I'm just going to skip, like stick to SUN gauge group. Um, uh, of course, th th there are games you can play with, with other gauge groups, but I'm, I'm gonna, just going to stick to like SUN cases in this talk. And, uh, uh, and so if I want to add chiral superfields in the adjoint representation of the SUN gauge group, then I can add a maximum number of two so that I'm still consistent with or compatible with asymptotic freedom of the, just between the number of adjoints and, and, and fundamentals, I can still have an asymptotically free gauge theory. Uh, and so that's like sort of the interesting case uh, uh, to look at. So, so that's what we can do. Let's call these um, up to two chiral superfields, X, X and Y. And then the statement is that when I do so, the IR phase of, of this class of gauge theories, like, so this is what I'm calling adjoint SQCD, uh, is going to depend on both N, the, the rank of, of my gauge group, and NF, the number of flavors of the fundamental, uh, fundamental course. So um, um, what we see is that actually, uh, uh, this, this is from my work from a while ago by Intrilligator and Wecht, is that uh, the possible, uh, so I can get a number of different fixed points from starting from this, this matter content. And all of the possible interacting n equals to one superconformal fixed points I can get starting from this matter content without adding extra stuff um, uh, are classified by their superpotentials of, of these adjoint fields. 
and uh, uh, they actually follow an ADE classification. So uh, uh, what I mean by that is that uh, uh, I can write different superpotentials for, for X and Y, and um, the possible superpotentials that flow to n equals to one superconformal fixed points that, that are non-trivial uh, are in exact correspondence with uh, uh, Arnold's simple surface singularities, which, which have this like a ADE sort of um, uh, ADE sort of structure. Uh, now, so just just a couple of comments. So first of all, uh, it's actually still an open question as to why we have this deeper connection with ADE in this context. So like, okay, they like what Intrilligator and Wetch did is they saw they basically did like an A maximization analysis where, okay, if I consider all the possible different um, ways to deform from uh, uh, my various fixed points by adding like super potentials of, of these uh, chir chiral super fields, what, what, when can I flow to something non-trivial and then when are other terms relevant and irrelevant and so on, that was the sort of analysis they were doing. And then they just organically found by doing that analysis that uh, they got this ADE structure, but um, but the deeper like I mean ADE shows up all over the place in physics, and I'm just commenting that the deeper reason why it shows up here is still like a totally open question. Um, and then the 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 other thing to point out is uh, that uh, so uh, here I'm talking about some general classification with up to two chiral superfields, um, but the the class with only one chiral superfield is is this. Uh, top um, a k class. So here uh, uh, I've just given a mass to the y chiral superfield so I can think about uh, integrating it out. And then at, at low energies, I just have this trace uh, x to the k plus one term. And, and the statement is so that if I just have one adjoint chiral superfield, then all of the, um, uh, and, and no extra stuff on top of my SQCD, then all of the possible superconformal fixed points are classified by uh, this trace x to the k plus one type superpotential. And then of course, k equals one is the, so like a, uh, uh, the a one case is x is massive and, and that's just reproducing just plain old SQCD without any adjoint matter at all. Uh, so various of these ADE theories, um, uh, have proposed cyborg-like dualities. And so uh, uh, the first uh, was found for, for this one adjoint um, superfield class, this AK class, um, uh, very soon after the original cyborg duality paper by Kudasov and then Kudasov and Schwimmer uh, studied this class of theory of, uh, of, uh, of, of fixed points. Um, then uh, uh, Brody found... Um, uh, or proposed uh, a, a class of cyborg-like duals for the D series. Uh, and then there was a, a giant gap <laughs> of almost 20 years before Kudasov and Lin pr proposed for the E7 series. And uh, we, we still have no idea for E6 and E8. It's kind of an interesting story. So the cases where there are, so first of all, by cyborg-like duel, I mean a duel where I have like on this on the magnetic side, uh, a different gauge group, which is of the form SU uh, alpha NF minus N, where alpha is a parameter that depends on, on which of these ADE cases I'm, I'm talking about. Um, and, uh, and some other like singlet matter and some like magnetic type super potential. And the statement is that the cases where we have like well proposed duals, uh, require a chiral ring truncation of, of, the, of the chiral operators made out of traces of powers of these adjoint fields. Uh, so for example, in this AK series, just the fact that I have um, this uh, trace X to the K plus one super potential means I have an F term that sets trace X to the uh, uh, X to the sum power to zero for all powers bigger than K in uh, in, in the chiral ring of, of this theory. And so that's a truncation uh, like of, of the chiral ring of this theory. And, and the fact that this is the, the power that we're truncated to is K is reflected in the fact that 
um, uh, actually for, uh, we're, we're going to be focusing on this A case, case for the rest of the time uh, that this alpha parameter is, is K. So uh, actually my first project uh, ever <laughs> In uh, in grad school with uh, uh, with with Ken was was exploring uh, this sort of web of dualities and and the puzzles that happen when we don't get this caudal ring truncation and there are still like puzzles here so th there's still like some unresolved uh, puzzles in this story as to whether or not um, we can have magnetic duals that make sense in these cases where we don't get this obvious sort of car like f f term or quantum. Uh, uh, chiral ring truncation. So can, can um, I understand, when mm -hmm. you say it requires a chiral ring, you're saying that, I mean, this theory has a chiral ring tr truncation given that super potential, right? So you're just yes. saying that in order to come up with these cyborg-like dualities, you needed to use this and you're trying yes. to- Okay, okay, that's fine. Thank you. Exactly. I, I, I'm saying that like in order like to have a proposed dual that makes sense, I need some truncation, like, and that truncation, like the, the order of that truncation is exactly going to show up in the dual, like super potential, or sorry, dual gauge group, um, like beyond just like the matrix truncation, like, like, of course, like, you know, like at some point, like powers of these, like these are matrices. And at some point they're redundant, it's redundant to take traces of powers of them. But like the only case where we have duals that make sense like the, there is some further truncation, either just from like a straight up classical F term or a proposed in, in some cases, like uh, in the D even series, it's actually a proposed quantum truncation. Um, like the duality would only make sense if there's a, you know, a quantum truncation. And so that's a proposal um, uh, of the ring, like even further. Yeah. Are these truncations over finite, finite groups? Uh, sorry, truncations over finite groups. Say what you mean again. Uh, these truncations or this uh, are these dualities are do, do they belong to the finite groups? Oh, of matrices? Uh, uh, do they belong to the finite group of matrices? Uh, let's see. I'm. I think I think may, maybe I'm not quite understanding your question. Um, I, I think I'm not, can, can you rephrase? Sorry. Uh, these truncations, uh, they actually revolve on matrices, right? So yes. if we do well, truncations over them, yeah. Uh, do we consider infinite groups in here or do we only focus on the finite groups? Oh, I see. Um, yeah, we, so we focus on the finite groups. Yes. Okay, thank you. Yeah, sorry. Thanks for the question. Yeah, so um, uh, so this is kind of an interesting story where, uh, like, I, I've always wanted to come back and, and better understand some of some of these proposed duels, and uh, uh, like, there are still it, it's to me it's kind of funny that there are still uh, puzzles in such a simple class. I mean, I mean, straightforward class of like super conformal field, like n equals to one super conformal field theories that are so closely related to just cyborg duality. Um, uh, and so uh, 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 for me, it's, it's very satisfying to try to try to come back to these theories from another perspective now. And today, for, for so for the rest of the talk, uh, I, I've told this story about the two adjoint theories, but I'm really only going to focus on the, the one adjoint case. Um, so uh, we, we have some ideas like, uh, uh, which we're still playing with for the two adjoint theories, which we're excited about. But for, for the rest of this talk, I'm only going to focus on this AK case, um, uh, which I can think of as just a, a one adjoint theory with trace X to the K plus one super potential. Okay. Okay, so on to the other side of the duality, which are these Argyris Douglas theories and, and their deformations. Um, so, uh, uh okay, <laughs> uh, I, I know it's kind of like, I think it's kind of funny to call them like our, our Juris Douglas theories. Uh, the nomenclature is, is because the, the first such theory of, of the type I'm, I'm, with the sort of features I'm going to describe, um, uh, was discovered by Argyris and Douglas in the 90s on 
um, by tuning to a special point on the uh, moduli space of pure SU3 uh, n equals to two gauge theory. So uh, uh, these are very special kinds of n equals to two superconformal field theories. Um, they were first found by this sort of um, field theory analysis tuning to um, um, very special singular, singular points on the moduli space of various 40 n equals to two gauge theories. Uh, and these are singular points where uh, uh, BPS states with uh, uh, charges which are mutually non-local with each other become massless at the same time. Uh, uh, and a whole host of these was um, first understood from, from this, sort of, um, this sort of perspective and subsequently from other perspectives. And uh, I call them uh, non-Lagrangian because uh, they're uh, uh, intrinsically strongly coupled in, in the sense that uh, they don't have some parameter that I can tune to weak coupling and I don't have a, a useful uh, N equals to do Lagrangian description of their conformal point. Uh, now, at this point, uh, we actually know uh, in, in some cases of this class of, of theories of, um, uh, I would say, dual uh, uh, N equals to one uh, quiver uh, gauge theories, which uh, are argued to then um, enhance supersymmetry in the IR and flow to these exact um, strongly coupled fixed points. So there's a very interesting story on, on different perspectives we have on, on these fixed points, uh, but we don't, we don't have a Lagrangian description, like an N equals two Lagrangian description of the conformal point itself. It, that's the sense in which I use these quotes non-Lagrangian. Uh, and, and one of their uh, uh, hallmark features is that they possess relevant operators in their spectrum of fractional scaling dimensions that parameterize their, uh, their, their Coulomb branch. So um, there are, are various classes of these theories. They go under different names that are very confusing to me <laughs> in, in, in the literature. Uh, and uh, I'm, I'm going to focus on uh, a class. Uh, okay, like the naming, I'm going to call it like DP class G, like DPG. Um, but uh, uh, this is a class that can be described in class S by Take starting with the two comma zero, like sixty two comma zero super conformal field theories of type G, where I'm going to G could be in you know ADE, but in again in this talk I'm only talking about SUN cases or AN AN minus one cases. Uh, uh, I'm reducing them over a sphere or compactifying them on a sphere with uh, two punctures. Uh, one of the punctures. Uh, is going to be a regular or or full puncture, and the other is going to be uh, or an ir uh, sorry a regular full puncture, <laughs> and uh, uh, or maximal puncture, uh, and the purpose in life of this full puncture on the sphere from this this sort of perspective is to impart uh, a G or S in this case S U N uh, flavor symmetry to my uh, low energy quantum field theory. And um, the other puncture is going to be an irregular puncture, um, which uh, so so the punctures are labeled by um, the type of singularity of the Higgs field and the associated Hitchin system. And so the types of irregular punctures that I'm going to consider, they're labeled by some positive integer P. And um, P is basically like kind of like what I wrote here. Uh, it's the fractional part of the pole for this uh, uh, for this Higgs field in the associated Hitchin system. So uh, from this perspective, the, the regular versus irregular puncture is differentiated by the fact that irregular punctures have this fractional, uh, fractional pole. And then the fractional part is this positive integer P in these conventions. And so uh, wh when I take this class of theories uh, and, re and uh, reduce them to um, four, uh, uh, four dimensions, I get uh, n equals two uh, super conformal field theories that are labeled by this integer p associated with my irregular puncture. Um, and they're labeled by the, the type g that I started with, which uh, is a flavor symmetry of my 40 field theory. And again, uh, I'm, I'm only taking the an minus one case. Uh, so you, you might have different ways that you like to call these depending on your 
uh, favorite <laughs> favorite naming system. And uh, you can get this class of theories from uh, from other perspectives, like from the type two B perspective of uh, 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 like two B on some uh, like threefold like hypersurface singularity. But uh, uh, for this for this talk, it's sufficient. I'm going to look at this uh, class S perspective. And just for example, when I take uh, uh, G equals SU2, so like the, the simplest case uh, in this class of uh, DPG theories, um, this is exactly like this theory that I've geometrically engineered in this way is exactly the same theory I get by tuning to the maximal singular point on the Coulomb branch of SO2P super Yang mills. So these perspectives between tuning and, um, and this like a uh, like class S perspective overlap with each other. So uh, uh, two comments. So, so the first comment is that uh, just to say generally, like kind of all of the richness of like why like these types of n equals two super conformal field theories are so special and, and uh, particularly uh, interesting amongst other uh, n equals to two field theories comes from this irregular puncture. Um, so the, the irregular puncture is kind of the weird part of this quote unquote weird part of this geometry that's like resulting in these sort of special features. And, uh, and the second comment is just that this class uh, of, of DPA and minus one, uh, our Dears Douglas theories uh, uh, have within uh, recent years now uh, known uh, large N uh, holographic duals from 11D uh, uh, supergravity and uh, and so that's another kind of interesting perspective we now we we have uh, on these theories that is being uh, utilized. Furthermore, um, so these DPG theories have this G flavor symmetry, but this is kind of the starting building block of a whole host of other types of theories where I can think about uh, uh, closing this uh, uh, general regular puncture. Uh, by giving a VEV to the moment map operator uh, of the flavor symmetry and, and, and get like other types of theories with other types of flavor symmetries. Okay, so th this is the class that we're going to, um, uh, uh, that we're going to be focused on here. Uh, and so let, I just want to review some of like the main features of the operator content and symmetries of these theories uh, that we're going to need. And for a technical, for like some technical reasons, I'm going to completely restrict to the case where uh, 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 this integer p, this positive integer p, which labels the irregular puncture, and our uh, uh, n, like related to the rank of, of the gauge group, so to speak, um, uh, are co-prime integers. So uh, basically, like I get extra symmetries and extra complications and form formulas become no longer, um, uh, like, like I can no longer write them in closed form uh, in some cases when I, when I don't make this assumption that I'm restricting to this GCDPN equals one case. So then also for the rest of this talk, everything I say, I'm going to be restricting to, to this. Okay, so these are N equals to two uh, super conformal field theories. So they have an SU2, uh, times u1 r symmetry, uh, first of all. <laughs> uh, uh, we can compute their uh, central charges. Like this, this has been done. Uh, sorry, I think I put the references maybe on the previous slide, but um, uh, their central charges will depend on, uh, again, the two integers n, uh, n and p. Um, uh, we have this su1 flavor symmetry associated to the full puncture, uh, which uh, we can again compute, uh, and again, um, this depends on these integers p and n. It's it's some fraction, and associated to this SUN flavor symmetry is a conserved uh, is a conserved current, and the primary operator of that conserved SUN current multiplet uh, is what we call the the moment map operator. It's some operator in in the adjoint representation. Of my um, uh, of my flavor symmetry, and it's charged under my SU two R symmetry, uh, and and this moment map operator moment map operator plays a role um, 
and we, and we know some things about it. So we know that it satisfies some uh, relations. Uh, these were seen from the sure limit of, of the index in, in this paper, uh, uh, which basically tell, tell you that the Higgs branch of, of this theory is, is a nil potent orbit, but from this sort of, uh, these sorts of relations. So, so we know some things about like the Higgs branch of these theories, for example. Uh, sorry. And as for- can, mm -hmm. I, can I just ask a quick question? Uh, why is the central charge A here not proportional to the dimension? H have you done something here? Uh, why is it not proportional to the dimension? Sorry. Yeah. Uh, so so, so I th I'm trying to see if, if, if you rewrote it here, but I thought when you have GCD PN is 1, it's yeah. 4P minus 1 times P minus 1 over P times the dimension. Um, uh, so I, I I don't I don't understand why there's no why there's this kind of strange combination of of coefficients for the independent terms. Uh, uh, maybe I'm missing something. I see. Okay, may, maybe we should compare notes later. I don't think I made a typo, but yeah. Thanks. Okay, uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, Live, like it would be hard for me to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, it should match what you know. I mean, these are like the DPSU one theories. Right, 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 exactly. Yeah, it should match what you know. So <laughs> if I haven't made a typo, yeah, let's com let's compare notes yeah, later. Yeah. Thanks for the comment. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> um. Uh. And so then we know some things about the um, the Coulomb branch of this theory as well. So I have a, a spectrum of, of Coulomb branch operators that are these are the ones that are charged under my U one R symmetry. And, uh, and so for this class of theories, I can uh, write down the, I, I know the dimensions of, of these operators. I, I have some number of them. Uh, here I'm writing some um, formula that depends on, uh, uh, this plus just means only when the um, stuff in the parentheses is positive. Do, do, when this combination of numbers gives a positive number, <laughs> uh, do, do we consider that um, as, as part of the, the Coulomb branch? So, and, and I'll call these Coulomb branch operators by like U. Okay. Okay, so uh, uh, sorry, that was a little, maybe in the little bit in the weeds of details, but um, so what, what's the key idea? So the key idea that's going to be useful for us and which is really like the key useful idea of this entire like sort of class S program um, is to view um, these sorts of superconformal field theories like these DPSUN theories that arise from these sorts of geometric building blocks here. It's arising from our two comma zero theory compactified on this like punctured sphere um, as a generalized matter sector. So as some building block, it has in this case, so, so I'm drawing it with this like abstract um, like circle uh, and it has, so I'm using this quiver notation uh, which I'm sure is okay in, in the quiver meeting. And um, uh, it has like some flavor symmetry or SUN flavor symmetry, which I'm denoting by this box. So I'm kind of just, you know, using this sort of quiver notation to call, uh, uh, to, to show the features of this DPSUN theory. And like basically starting, even though this is like some strongly coupled thing, it's like non-Lagrangian, it's like, you, you, you know, it's some strongly coupled non-Lagrangian superconformal field theory. Uh, we can still view it as a generalized matter sector where we can gauge things, we can couple it to other things. So we can take this SUN block and we can, you know, gauge diagonal subgroups of it with like other stuff and, um, uh, and build other classes of interesting, uh, typically superconformal field theories starting from these sorts of building blocks. So this is like the philosophy behind uh, much of the richness of this class S program. And uh, uh, it's a philosophy we're going to utilize here. So here, what we're going to do is we're going to consider uh, an N equals to one deformation of, of these N equals to two superconformal field theories. So step one is we're going to take our, our DPSUN theory uh, and we're going to add a super potential. Um, and the particular super potential we're going to add uh, uh, is going to be, we're just going to add the Coulomb branch operator of, of my DPSUN theory, uh, which has the smallest um, scaling dimension. And so for this class of theories, 
that scaling dimension is one plus one over P. This is like, uh, it has a fractional scaling dimension as, as I emphasize is one of like the fun features of these theories. And we're gonna, so we're gonna take the one with the smallest scaling dimension um, and uh, just add it via a super potential. And when I do so, I break uh, n equals two sym supersymmetry to n equals to one. So, so this breaks to n equals to one supersymmetry. And then I can ask like, okay, do I flow to like an n equals to one fixed point? Uh, uh, and the answer is yes, I do. And uh, I can check um, what the features of this n equals to one fixed point I flow to upon this deformation um, uh, for starters using a maximization. So basically from my, uh, 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 so I start with this n equals to two R symmetry of SU two R times U one R. And then um, from this n equals to one point of view, I have two U ones in here. So I have one U one that's generating like the n equals to one R symmetry. And then I have another U one, which is like now from the n equals to one perspective of flavor symmetry. And then my IR super conformal R symmetry is going to be in general. So these are the two U ones I have in the game. It's going to be in general, some um, mixing of, of these two U ones, like the, 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 the U one, which is actually uh, generating my super conformal R symmetry at the fixed point. And then the statement is that this, uh, uh, this mixing, uh, here I'm writing it as a function of like epsilon as a mixing parameter is fixed by, uh, by A maximization. So I, I can do that and I can check um, that uh, actually in this case, the fact that I have this super potential uh, uh, of this operator with this particular scaling dimension ends up completely fixing what this mixing parameter is. So uh, we can compute this like epsilon as a function of uh, of p and uh, n. So our two integers that label um, the, the theory we started with, uh, and then uh, upon doing so, we uh, uh, we arrive at um, uh, the correct superconformal R symmetry at the n equals to one fixed point. We can compute things like the scaling dimensions of operators and the central charges, which, which just to be explicit, I've written here. Uh, Craig, so, so here I definitely get like my ends, my dimension times like the P minus one and, and stuff. So that should look more familiar. <laughs> yes, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, okay, so that's great. We get this N equals to one fixed point. And the first observation is that uh, uh, these central charges, like, exactly match the central charges of just a chiral multiplet in the adjoint representation of SUN gauge group with a particular fractional R charge of, of two over P plus one. That, that's just something, um, uh, that, that's, that's like an observation. Okay, so maybe that's a first hint that these types of theories have something to do with theories with adjoints, okay. <laughs> Um, a further observation is that we can compute the sh sure index of, of these theories. It, it's difficult to compute the full superconformal index in general. We can compute it in special cases, uh, but uh, we can compute the sure index at least, like so the sure limit of the superconformal index. And we can check that um, the sure index also exactly matches uh, that uh, of these n equals to one superconformal fixed points match those of an adjoint chiral multiplet and n equals to one adjoint chiral multiplet with this particular fractional R charge that depends on, on P, this integer P. So um, now for, uh, okay, uh, furthermore, for P equals two, so uh, uh, when this is just R equals two over three, so that's the R charge of uh, in four dimensions of a, of a free chiral multiplet, R charge two thirds, or, or dimension one, scaling dimension one. So for this particular case, like uh, uh, we know in, from including from members of this audience that um, our D2 SUN theory with, with this super potential is known to flow exactly to a free chiral multiplet in the adjoint of SUN. So it's like in the free case, like, like when this is a free adjoint chiral multiplet, then, uh, you know, we're, we're sort of building this intuition that this theory is related to adjoint chiral multiplets. 
uh, and this is like a really definitely true for the case P equals two. And then kind of the statement is that uh, uh, for, for more general P, I mean, this is, you know, some strong, strongly coupled thing, um, but like a lot of the data of, of this theory, this N equals to one deformed um, DP G type theory really is uh, matching up with a, a, a G adjoint chiral multiplet. So like the, the kind of the tagline is that uh, uh, we should treat this sort of N equals to one deformed um, uh, uh, like super conformal field theory as a, a G adjoint chiral multiplet and see what mileage we can get out of that. Emily? Yes. Is the claim oh, hi, that, that I, is the claim that this theory for general P is uh, just infrared theory of a single chiral theory? Like you have uh, this super potential, like a chiral field theory, chiral multiplet in a joint representation with this in irrelevant super potential or? Uh, right, so so it, it really is in, in the IR, uh, it, like it flows to just this, exactly like this free, free chiral multiplet. So it's always a free chiral multiplet with some irrelevant superpotential. That's the claim. Uh, yes, yes, that's the claim. Yeah. Okay, thank you. For, right, right. Uh, and then the hope is that like kind of extending this intuition out beyond the free case, uh, where we still have this data that kind of matches between the two is, is a useful thing to, to look at. Yeah. Okay, so that was step one. Um, so, so step two is now we're going to take this, this theory. So, so we had our DPSUN theory and, and we um, added this particular super potential to flow to this particular kind of N equals to one fixed point. And we're basically just going to couple it to SUN SQCD <laughs> with uh, like our, our fundamentals. So we're going to like gauge a diagonal combination of, of this um, uh, uh, SUN flavor symmetry uh, with like uh, another SUN flavor symmetry so that I end up with like an SUN gauge node, an SUNF uh, uh, flavor symmetry and, and like I've kind of coupled this like SQCD to this like strongly coupled building block, this like a uh, DPSUN type theory, which again, like it's important that I've added this, uh, this super potential. This is an, uh, an, an N equals to one. Uh, this is a particular class of N equals to one fixed points that I'm getting here. So now, th now the claim is that when I do so, uh, exactly this class of fixed points I get uh, is dual to uh, our uh, ad 40 n equals to one uh, adjoint SQCD with our um, uh, trace, in this case, X to the P plus one super potential. So our AP fixed point. So like P equals K, <laughs> where P is the, uh, uh, the integer, which is telling me about the fractional power, um, uh, the fractional pole. Uh, of the irregular puncture in, in, in this, um, in this right-hand side, strongly coupled side. And um, P is like the power of my adjoint in the super potential in this class of um, one adjoint fixed points that we started our discussion with. And so the claim is that these two theories flow to the same SCFT at low energies. Before when you showed the, these AP chiral adjoint chiral guys, you had a second chiral field Y that appeared with yeah. the trace Y squared. Is it just that that integrates out or something? Yes, exactly. So I was presenting it that way be, to have like some unified discussion of all of the possible, like up to two adjoint cases. But indeed, like uh, in that sort of unified discussion, I can imagine adding like a plus Y squared. And, um, uh, you know, in the IR, that, that's the same thing. I think about integrating out that Y exactly like you said. Um, so I can think about this as like a one adjoint case. Okay. Okay, so that's, that's the claim. So uh, I'd like to go into a little more detail about some of the further checks of this claim beyond just, oh, it looks like, it looks like an adjoint chiral multiplet coupled to SQCD. <laughs> So um, the first kind of interesting statement is 
uh, about the conformal window for this duality. So, so let me be clear. So I started the discussion with this ad, you know, adjoint SQCD, and I said that there was some conformal window where, or I claimed, I, I told you there was some conformal window uh, between um, this adjoint SQCD fixed point and um, like a magnetic uh, cyborg-like dual. Okay. Um, so now I'm claiming that there's a different conformal window. Uh, so I should identify the, the range of parameters of like N and P and NF where uh, my deformed Argyris Douglas theory, like this, uh, you know, DP, like this N equals to one DP SUN type theory I just described uh, is actually going to flow to a super conformal field theory in the same range of parameters that my adjoint SQCD like theory is flowing to, to that proposed same super conformal field theory. So I need to be careful about like, okay, what is this conformal window for this new proposed duality? And the statement is, um, so for just on this, like, uh, you know, our, our Jiris Douglas side, um, I, I apologize, Philip, I'm using your name over and over and over. <laughs> um, uh, on, on the upper, so, so the, the range of NF as a function of N and NP, so that I actually flow to a super conformal fixed point, it, you know, it's non-trivial to determine this range. On the upper bound, um, there's the bound coming from like asymptotic freedom uh, of like all of these individual blocks. So I can kind of compute like the contribution to the beta function from like all of these blocks that I like glued together. And um, I see that uh, the theory is no longer asymptotically free uh, above this uh, two plus one over p times n uh, uh, bound. So, so on the one hand, I need to be smaller than that bound for the asymptotic for asymptotic freedom. On the lower bound, what I need to check is like when does my uh, fixed point with zero superpotential actually exist, so that I could add this uh, like particular super potential, which was the smallest dimension Coulomb branch operator as a relevant deformation to, to that fixed point. So, so that's an analysis I can do in, in this like deformed Argyris Douglas theory. Uh, and uh, it's, uh, it's a little complicated. Uh, so like the actual left-hand side of this bound is a very complicated looking function of, of P and N. Um, but kind of the punchline is it's like basically n over p <laughs> uh, in, in the sense that like uh, it's it's not exactly n over p. It's like a complicated function that depends on p and n. But like for all values of p and n, it's like extremely close to n over p. Okay, so um, so that's like the window in which this deformed Argyris Douglas theory might flow to a super conformal fixed point. Now we should compare with our um, adjoint SQCD fixed point. And there, the window that I flow to a fixed point, I'm bounded at the top by 2n. Uh, in, in this case, the asymptotic freedom bound is just like 2n for, for the gauge theory. Uh, and uh, so, uh, uh, and then on the lower bound, I, I get a lower bound uh, on a fixed point coming from, uh, first of all, vacuum stability. Uh, so below a certain, value of but like with two little fla flavors, uh, I no longer get a stable vacuum. Um, and so that bound, that, that, that's like the hard lower bound. And then there are corrections to this lower bound by the same sort of analysis I just described by like checking when our, in this case, AP super potential uh, is a relevant deformation from like the zero super potential case. Uh, and so, uh, so I just kind of want to emphasize, like looking at these windows is like, they're very different computations in either case. And yet um, they're, they give basically the same sort of range. It's, it's, a little, uh, it's a little bit different by like basically one over P corrections. So like it's exactly the same uh, range at large P. Uh, so just the fact that like I'm flowing to the fixed point um, the, you know, the putative fixed point that I'm claiming is like the same fixed point for both of these cases when, when these windows overlap, um, um, that they, that it's like basically the same range of parameters is I think like a pretty, uh, uh, okay, it's an important observation as to like that this duality actually makes sense. 
Okay. And so then of course we have like some standard checks, like, okay, like my, my basic zero form global symmetries match on both cases. Um, uh, of course, uh, I need to check uh, my like uh, super conformal R symmetry and uh, central charges, and, and I can do so. Uh, it's again, a different computation on either on either side, but on either side, I get the same matching values of, of the central charges. So again, that's a pretty strong check. I mean, these are functions of N and F and, and, and P. Um, and then furthermore, um, uh, so like, like I said, we, we only have access to the full index for very special cases. And the full index between the two sides of the duality uh, exactly matches for P equals two and N equals three. So, I mean, for that particular um, case, uh, that's an extremely strong check that, that these theories are, are really dual. Um, and then we don't have access yet to the full, uh, full index for other cases, but we do have access to the sure limit of, of the index. And then we've checked that it matches against the, both sides of the duality. Um, so then there's kind of an interesting story with the chiral operators in my theory. So you should check how the chiral operators match on, on either side of the duality. So like on the um, uh, adjoint SQCD side of the duality, I have these like traces of powers of the adjoint chiral superfield. These are the ones that I remember I mentioned at the beginning are truncated to like trace X to the K by my F term from, from the superpotential. Uh, and these map on to the um, the level two descendants of the um, Coulomb branch operators of the Argyris Douglas theory. So my, you know, my, uh, my uh, like n equals to two theory starting out had these Coulomb branch operators. And um, of course, in the n equals to two multiplet, um, if I act with two supercharges, I get uh, also scalar chiral operators that um, I can think of as primaries of n equals to one, like sub multiplets. And so uh, when I deform the theory to n equals to one, I get um, various types of scalar operators in my theory. I get like the original Coulomb branch operators and I get the um, Q squared descendants of these guys as, as uh, chiral operators in my theory. And so it's these Q squared descendants that map onto my adjoint chiral superfields. And, um, uh, uh, and so here, uh, there's an exact match between these, but, uh, uh, we don't see on the Argyris Douglas side uh, the truncation of the Coulomb branch descendants to like this power J equals, it would be J equals P in, in this case. So this is very common for these types of dualities. Like it, it was very common for the sorts of dualities I, I mentioned at the beginning that on one side, it's not like, you know, like the, the relation isn't classical, uh, like this, this sort of uh, truncation of the chiral ring. And uh, and so here it's a you know it's it's a prediction, uh, it's a prediction that if this duality is is really good, um, then um, the chiral operators of this n equals to one deformed theory uh, have to truncate in this particular way. Except um, for our special uh, star case of p equals two and n equals three, where everything is like exactly matches on the nose, and there's no the like. The p equals two n equals three cases are are dual. Like the full superconformal indices match. The full like spectrum of chiral operators match completely on the nose. Like there's no mystery. Um, uh, it's just like as I go up in rank, that um, uh, that this is a prediction. Now, furthermore, I have uh, Masonic type operators. So on like on the adjoint FQCD side. So these are like q q twiddle type operators, like from my my quarks and anti quarks. And then I can have some number of powers of the adjoints in between, so like generalized mesons. And these map to products of the moment map operator with like my Q and Q twiddle on the uh, like a DPG side of the duality. And so here I actually so so again like on the um, adjoint SQCD side I I need you know I see classically this truncation to mesons, like with this uh, power of the adjoint, like being truncated in, in this case at, P, at P, P minus one. And that's exactly reproduced in uh, in our dual 
because of this, like, like it's reproduced by the fact that we have this particular Higgs branch relation that we know about uh, uh, in the dual that truncates uh, these adjoint powers of, of the moment map operator to um, to p minus one. So uh, we do get the correct truncation of, of the mesonic operator like on the nose, uh, like just fully, um, like transparently. And then of course there are like baryonic type operators and those all just match on the nose. Like both sides have like fundamentals and anti-fundamentals. Um, now, um, oops, just to mention like, uh, so uh, at the, kind of the and boundary case of, mm -hmm. yes, uh, there, the, there are many more uh, operators uh, which, which are called adjoint park, adjoint pariums. What about which those? Are called adjoint, uh, adjoint oh, pariums. Yes. Good. Um, so those are exactly like, like, so those follow exactly the same, um, like match. So those match and they match because, uh, they will be products of the, um, of the moment map operators with like the various like quarks. So, so indeed I, I haven't written every, every operator in this theory. I, I wrote like a few of them. Um, there are generalized baryons, which you're mentioning, which have like you know, like, like, like Q times uh, X to some power, like all to some power and, and so on. Uh, and, mm -hmm. and those ones will match. Yeah. For the same reason that the Maisons matched. I see. Thank, but thanks for the question. Yeah. Sorry. I'm, I'm not being complete here, but I, I was okay. kind of pointing out like the, the first class. I see. Thanks. Thanks. Okay. Okay, good. Um, uh, so then, and then just to point out for, uh, this, uh, boundary case of NF equals to 2N, uh, uh, this truncation completely goes away, uh, for, for P equals to as it should, because in, in this case, I, I add some, um, super potential and I, and I flow to like a fixed point with enhanced N equals to two supersymmetry, which is the fixed point I expect to have been able to get at from the adjoint SQCD side. So, um, so it's just to say that's a consistent picture with other things we know about like connections between uh, these theories and other theories. Okay, so, uh, 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 so that's at least like some, some baseline level, level of checks. Uh, I think it's quite compelling. Um, and, uh, and so like, just to summarize, I motivated this uh, new non-Lagrangian dual of a class of 40 N equals to one fixed points in adjoint SQCD. And, uh, oh yeah, okay, it's, it's time. So uh, let me just finish with some like open problems. So, so the first thing is, you know, like, like I argued that this was, uh, or, or I presented like arguments that this was perhaps a natural thing to guess this sort of duality based on this relation between these like n equals to one deformed like theory like uh, our dearest Douglas theories and like adjoint chiral multiplets. Um, so there's some intuition that like this is like a nice thing to look at. And then like I uh, I gave you uh, I think at least like some list of non-trivial checks of this proposed duality. But of course like there are you know one one should try to be as thorough as possible, and. Uh, put put this to the test. So that's the first comment. Like we should, you know, anything you can think to test, we should test. But um, really, at present, like this proposed duality is most interesting for learning about the non-Lagrangian dual, right? Like I said, like oh, like by um, uh, like if if we think this duality is correct, then um, like we learn something about the chiral ring of operators of these n equals to one like fixed points that we got at from these non-Lagrangian duals. So it's useful in that respect. And perhaps it could be useful in like learning about the, like how to compute the full super conformal index of, of our non-Lagrangian duals. Of course, they should match <laughs> the, the super conformal index of adjoint SQCD if we're, if the duality is correct. And so we can try to think if we can extend like our knowledge of like the sure limit of the index for these non-Lagrangian cases and like see if, if, if we can like use this duality to like get at more information about the full super conformal index, for example. Um, however, uh, for, for me, I think it would be most very exciting if we could extend um, this, uh, uh, this duality to dualities of the two adjoint theories. So uh, 
because then we can kind of turn this around and say like, oh, like, can we use these new um, proposed dualities of two adjoint theories to shed a light on their lingering puzzles that, that I spent some time talking about at, at the beginning, at the beginning of the hour. So for, for me, that would be extremely interesting. Um, and from this like uh, geometric building blocks perspective, it looks like we would need two sort of DPG blocks with different keys. Uh, and uh, uh, we don't quite have it working yet, but um, I think this is like, uh, I, I think there's like a definite possibility that we could uh, try, try to propose a dual for one of the like uh, uh, E-series cases. And that would be extremely exciting if we could learn something about say these E-series cases from this totally different perspective. Um, so, uh, okay, there's more to do. For example, we need to extend to other types of DPG theories. I, I only like told you about DP SUN, but you know, you should expect relations for, for other types of G, for example, ADE. Um, and another, another point is that I, I mentioned that these DP SUN theories like have holographic duals that we understood in recent years. Uh, and so, uh, it would be really great if we could um, like use these duals to understand like the holographic duals of of their uh, of these n equals to one types of deformations. Like, can we can we look at like some large p limit um, in like like with these sorts of uh, theories, and, and can we understand how to get at them from this holographic perspective? I, I think like that that would be very interesting, and could also maybe like help us get at like a you know holography for some of these other like adjoint SQCD type theories. That, that would be a really interesting direction. Um, and um, uh, I'm just, just to speculate, like the fact that we have these holographic duals of the uh, these DP SUN type theories means that like, okay, we understand like at least in 11D supergravity, like what the dual like uh, description of these like irregular punctures is. Uh, and so uh, kind of thinking along those lines, like uh, I, I think a very interesting direction is whether we can use this as a hint for like, you know, could we glue these sorts of like our Jairus Douglas type building blocks, not just via the regular punctures by gauging diagonal subgroups of the SUN flavor symmetries like we is our bread and butter <laughs> in class S, but is, is there some way to like use this new perspective to think about like new deformations involving the irregular punctures? Um, that would be extremely interesting. It would have interesting implications for, for these sorts of like dualities I was talking about also. So those are sorts of like the open problems and speculations I, I think are, are interesting. And so with that, I'll thank you for your attention. Thank you. All right, let's thank Emily for this nice talk. Do we have more questions? Um, I, I have some a, a question about this, the the mismatch of the boundaries of the conformal window between the mm -hmm. the two pictures. How um, I I'm a little confused as how to think about that. Does that do you take this as an indication that there's you know for many values of p and n they are actually dual, but sometimes they miss, and so there some of them. They, 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 some of them, one side or the other includes fixed points which are not captured by the other one, and and you kind of That's... see this at the boundary because the because there is this uh, kind of one over p mismatch. That's ex exactly what you said. Is like how how I would interpret that. Uh -huh. Like uh, exactly that. Like it's encouraging on the one hand that there's a large range of like for general p and n. There's a there's a big range where we flow to the fixed point, which is the proposed same fixed point. And so therefore, like the actual conformal when proposed conformal window is, you know, the like constrained, like, you know, when those ranges overlap, right? Uh, and, and to be clear that those also overlap with a big portion of like, you know, like the conformal window of the magnetic, like cyber-like duals for these um, like adjoint SQCD theories. But as, yeah, But yeah, like there's some like boundary effects uh, where they don't exactly match up and like, yeah, like, uh, uh, then not necessarily. Right. So, but, um, but I guess yeah. I'm asking whether they, you think that they only don't match on those boundaries or that also means that sort of in the interior of the domain, there are places where they, you don't, 
generically expect them to match for, you know, say, large, you know, for generic co-prime large values of P and N or something like this? Um, I see. So I, so naively, I, I would expect them to match generically within the inclusion of, of these regions because like of both of them, right? The overlap of these two regions, because it's exactly there that a, I, I flow to the fixed points and B, once I flow to the fixed points, all these other like, you know, features that I listed off, like that are some checks of the duality are, are true. Mm -hmm. um, of course, those aren't true if I don't flow to a fixed point, right? It's only when I flow to a putative fixed point that I can claim um, mm -hmm. that I'm claiming like a, a potential duality. So I don't see like a hint that it wouldn't be true at, at places in the inclusion, but I certainly would not make any claims about the, about the exclusion. Yeah. So, in the in the uh, near those boundary the, those mismatching boundary values, you you gave us some formulas for A and C, say central charges or something like that. Those uh, apply even to the to to a boundary one of those mismatched boundary fixed point theories, which is caught by one of them and not the other, but it's, but that's the, that's the correct sort of central charge formula in that case. So, so, uh, except that like I computed those central charges, like using like a maximization and stuff, assuming right. there was a fixed point. So I'm saying like, there may not be a fixed point outside of that region. So that computation is no longer valid. It's like, yeah, the mechanics of the computation would give the same answer, but I wouldn't yeah. claim that yeah, like no, I can use that computation. Right. I, I was asking specifically about a fixed point, which is seen in one from one point yeah. of view, but not the other. But yeah. you're saying the same central charge. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. The uh, a second question it was I just on very quick. You you gave it you you chose P and N co prime. Do you also know how to what super potential or deformation to use when they're not co prime, or is that just an open question? At the moment? I would I would say it's an open question. Okay. Many things become like more challenging in those okay. cases, and I in particular I get more symmetries. Uh, so, yeah, I would call that an open question. Thanks. Thank you. Hi, I have a question. Um, so if you start from this theory, uh, that you get this uh, deformed Argyris Douglas theory, is there any way from there to understand any relationship with the original magnetic dual of that you get in the Kutas of Schwim. Good. So, so like what I would say, like, let me know if this answers your question is like, so you can kind of compare like the, like the windows where I, I flow to a fixed point for all, for all of these, you know, like, like for my, N equals one deformed theory for my like adjoint STCD and then for the magnetic like cyber like Kutasov Schwimmer dual of uh, of that and uh, indeed like you could in general like there is a region of parameter space where all of those overlap and so they all are proposed to, you know to be flowing to the same fixed point um, now. Because, like in this case, we understand very well the relationship between like like adjoint SQCD and it's like the one adjoint SQCD and it's Kutasov Schwimmer dual. Like, I wouldn't say like I'm necessarily necessarily learning something new about the dual. Like, like you know, like I'm learning like uh, I haven't learned more about the dual than I already knew <laughs> uh, from from their analysis. But but indeed, there's a range of parameters for which it's the same. Uh, same fixed point. And then if there were things I didn't know about the dual, like maybe for these like E cases, uh, then maybe I could be learning about that. Like if, if there's a range of parameters where, you know, they, they, they would all be overlapping, so. Yes, uh, sorry. Yeah, maybe I had in mind something more naive, like, well, I mean, I'd assume that these theories have like the same, so there is an original electric, there is an original electric theory, then you have the Kutasov Schwimmer, and then you have your new dual. I assume that uh, they all have the same global symmetry. So many, many things will be. But then I was wondering maybe from your theory, one could turn on, I don't know, some operators that I don't know, then are relevant, maybe let you flow to the magnetic symmetry, 
magnetic theory or something like that. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I, yeah, I don't know if you ever tried anything. And then also there's another thing which is about the nature of this duality, because in the traditional duality, I believe the magnetic theory is very weakly coupled where the electric theory is very strongly coupled, but here, well, I don't know how it works. Right, here it's kind of funny, right? So it's not a strong weak coupling duality in that sense, right? Be like, so yeah. yeah, as you say, and, and as, as I said, like, the, you know, like the kudasau schwimmer duel and, and like Agile and SQCD, they're, yeah, one is strongly coupled, one is weakly coupled and vice versa. But here it's kind of like, there's a real sense in which the like uh, the n equals one deformed theory is always strongly coupled in in some sense. So it's a different type. It, it's not a. I wouldn't call it a strong weak coupling type of duality like that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But yeah, thank thanks for the question. Yeah. Thanks. So I have maybe a slightly naive question. Um, so I want to know what happens if if you start going outside of the conformal window. So regular cyber duality works nicely, and I learn something about um, some kind of uh, IR free description uh, that UV completes into some interesting thing. Um, can can I say something similar here? I have some some weakly coupled IR free gauge theory that completes as this funny DPG. I'm, I'm t it's tempting to say so I, th I think it's a good question I think it's tempting to say something like that but I, I wouldn't I wouldn't go on the on the record yet, uh, <laughs> so, so to speak yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah all, all I'm like really comfortable like like committing to is is you know like I think we have strong evidence for this duality in a conformal window where they flow to the fixed point but mm -hmm. yeah of course like part of the power of you know cyber and Kudasov Schumer dualities are the fact that we can go beyond that and we can go to like a you know like magnetic free range and that's telling us about some like other range and so yes like like yes like, like so you should look at that in, in these cases but um yeah i i don't have, have as definitive of claims there thanks, thanks. okay do we have more questions If not, then um, ah, so go ahead. Where is the part uh, that the truncation is uh, used? Or, or in other words, um, what will happen if this term will be removed? Uh, like on which you, you mean, like in the original, like adjunct SQCD, or you, you mean like in the like uh, any equals one deformed case? The super potential. So. so you you use the the uh, super potential. Mm -hmm. What will what will happen? So, in general, if if you put it in, then uh, you, you remove plenty of the chiral operators. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so then what will happen when you if you try if you make an attempt to compute something for the theory with zero super potential? Ah, uh, good. So the zero super potential theories, um, good. So there is, so on the adjoint SQCD side, um, uh, we do think that we flow to a fixed point with the zero super potential theory, um, but we don't have a proposed dual for it. So there's, in any case, so there's no proposed um, like Kudasov swimmer like dual. Um, and, uh, Part, I mean, like, like part of the issue is, as, as you say, like now, like I don't have this truncation, like when I don't have the super potential and yeah, like, as I was pointing out, like, that's kind of like the key thing that like results in the fact that I can't write down like or in a naive way, at least um, like a magnetic dual. So on the adjoint SQCD side, I, I flow to a fixed point, um, but uh, I don't know a dual description. And on the N equals one, like deformed or Dearest Douglas side, uh, I, again, flow, I, we believe we flow to a fixed point. So we did a whole analysis, like start with zero super potential, like 
when do I flow to a fixed point? Like, how does this depend on the parameters? And then when is it relevant to add this like Coulomb branch operator super potential? Like, so we, we did that whole analysis. And um, again, we think like we would flow to a fixed point, but I certainly wouldn't claim that that zero super potential fixed point is dual to the zero super potential fixed point of adjoint SQCD. D does that answer your question? Yes, okay, yeah. Um... Another thing is that if Sergio is still around, um, I was wondering what's the relation between uh, the two works, because he was also making some uh, statements about uh, adjoint SQCD. Mm. Hello, yeah, I'm around. So, uh, uh, so we were going to three dimensions. So it's a, if you want, there is a check of the duality uh, between uh, this DP and the uh, adjoint uh, going to three dimensions, and then you can prove there that the, two, the, the reduced three-dimensional theories are mirror. I see. So, so you'll find agreement if you have, uh, if you look at it from in four dimensions? So no, in four dimension we cannot prove anything. But uh, if you reduce uh, both the DP and uh, the no, I think we were doing not generic P. I think we were doing the D two, if I remember correctly. Uh, so if you if you so if you believe that there is a duality in three in four dimension, then you can reduce both theories to three dimension, and there you can prove that they are dual. Prove means that. Uh, they are a consequence of uh, like just simple cyberlike dualities without. Uh, um, see. Um, yeah, without uh, rank two matter. Okay, and and you also use the uh, truncation. The, could you make anything about the zero super potential phase? Uh, no. Only with the superpotential. Uh -huh. I mean, there are duals for the theory without, uh, like, if you use the confinement, you can construct duals for the theories without uh, superpotential. But it's not a duality like cyber like duality. The dual is a quiver. Um, it's not just a single gauge group theory. Like in three dimensions. In three or in four. This you can also do in. Uh, in four, but it's not a duality like uh, you, you would call. Yeah. Uh, it's not like intricate. It's not like um, we can do it for the USP, not for the SU gauge group. So it's a little bit. Uh, right. No, we cannot do it for the SU, but uh, the logic is similar. There is some intrigator duality which is uh, similar to the Kutas of Schwimmer, but as a USP gauge group instead of SU. And in that case, uh, you can turn on off the, the superpotential, and then you can find some uh, deconfined dual, which is a quiver with many uh, gauge nodes. So it's not really a duality in the sense of uh, Kutasu Schwimmer. Thank you. Okay. Do we have more questions for Emily? If not, I would say let's thank her again. And we can move off the record.